You know what came out during the trial? It came out during the trial that these planes have never been inspected, not one. This was admitted. It was admitted by the head security person at Shannon Airport. It was admitted by the guarder that they had never inspected a plane. Not only that, the government is supposed to issue an exemption if a military plane is carrying troops, not to be inspected, because arms are not supposed to travel through Shannon. That's in the law books. They have never gotten an exemption. They have never inspected a plane. It's totally illegal, and it's a betrayal of what most of the Irish people want and believe in. Most of the Irish people, a very strong majority, believe in neutrality, want to be neutral, do not want to be involved in warfare. They've had enough violence in their life. There was enough violence in the Irish history that they want to avoid it. So I would encourage every citizen to do what they can to make this an issue that they care about because it's a key issue. And if Ireland takes a bold step, if Ireland can say, no to war. No, we're not participating in it. No, sorry, we love the United States, we love the American people, but we don't want to be part of your wars and we will not be part of your wars. That's a bold step. You can hold your head up high. The Irish people could hold their head up high and the whole world will respect that. The director of airport security said, no, uh, you know, we've never had any reason to search these planes now. We know friends of ours who've delivered barrel loads of requests that the planes be searched and that it be taken seriously. Uh, and they had the bald-faced frontery just say, swear under a oath that, no, oh, we've never been asked to do it. And when I was on the stand, the prosecutor, when we were explaining that you know, we felt compelled to do this because action needed to be taken. He says, well, there are other means of doing it without breaking the law. So, so he went through a whole litany of, you know, did you call the guard eye? Did you call the papers? Did you call members of the doll and so forth? And actually, yeah, we've spoken to members of the doll and we've written to the papers. In the end, my barrister asked the great question in recross examination he said what sort of faith did you have in these authorities you were asked to call and i said none at all <laughs> uh, so what i did was necessary afri salutes the courage of ken and Tariq for the action that they have taken to highlight what's happening in our name in shannon airport we're all aware as we watch the horror of what's happening in ukraine of the awful impact of war on children in particular but on people in general and indeed on our precious planet itself and while Ireland has responded positively in terms of opening its doors to refugees from Ukraine there is the awful irony of at the same time providing Shannon Airport as a vital link in the US war machine to execute wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere and create tens of thousands of refugees from these countries. We must challenge this inconsistency on the part of the Irish government and we must recover our neutrality, we must treasure it, we must protect it. It is now more important than ever before. The wars, the military machine itself is literally destroying the environment that all of us need to live. All of us, the judge, the guardy, the government, there's no one who's an exception to this. We all need this planet. And the environment is being destroyed primarily by the United States military. The environmental pollution from 800 bases internationally or more, 400 also on the US, that's 1,200 bases all of those bases are admitting pollution into the area. And the Pentagon is not accountable for this. This is much bigger than Ken and myself. It's a much bigger issue. It's about neutrality. It's about peace. And we have so much respect for the Irish people because they, we know that they believe in neutrality and they believe in the importance of neutrality. And what I'm here to say is that Irish neutrality is not just important for Ireland, but it sets an example for the entire world. 
the Irish people do have an opportunity to really make a major contribution to turning back the American empire, which is teetering on the edge of collapse anyway. They could give it a significant shove if they really come out strong for neutrality, particularly if they can get it into the Constitution. I understand it kind of narrowly failed in the last attempt. So give it another try and push it over the edge and get it into the Constitution and make it real. Because unfortunately right now, Irish neutrality is phony and they can't afford to let it stay phony. What's needed in the world now is not another small country to jump on board the military juggernaut. What we need is a country to promote demilitarization, de-escalation and disarmament. And Ireland is in an ideal position to do this. It is an urgent need in our world at this moment when the dogs of wars have been released and militarism has been proposed as a solution to all problems. We have a different message from our history and we must promote this message urgently and firmly at this time. So it's all connected. You have the killing and you have over a million children that have been killed by these wars in the Middle East. Then you have the millions of people who are starving to death in Afghanistan. There's no excuse for this. At least we have to stand up and speak about it. Maybe we can't stop it. But we have an obligation as fellow human beings to stand up. That's why we did what we did. And that's the root of our commitment. And it's not going to stop. We're not going to stop. I don't know if we'll win. I don't know if we'll be successful. I don't know if any of us will be successful in saving this planet. You know, we, we have two threats. We have nuclear war and we have the destruction of the environment. And both of these threats are key components of the U.S. military. And this threatens all of us. It's not a joke. It's real. It's totally, totally real. It's not someone running around the streets with a sign saying the sky is falling and the world is going to end. And it's urgent. That's why I feel that it's incumbent on us to do what we can. All of us. I'm not the only one and Ken is not the only one. There are other people doing stuff. We need people to stand up. If you want to have a planet, how much longer do you want to live? Do you want to see your children grow up? Do you want to see them have a world? Do you want to see the animals survive, these wonderful animals? You know, then we have to do something. It's the only chance we have. You have to try. Well, I'd say if enough of them went on the airfield at once, or maybe one person at a time, day after day after day after day. And I know it's not particularly realistic to expect the Irish people to do that. But I think if there were a sustained effort to demonstrate the Irish people really don't want the United States dragging them, whether explicitly or just implicitly, into their wars, they can have an effect. And when I was on the stand, I, I made the uh, analogy. I said, you know, I live in the southwestern United States, uh, an easy day's drive from Grand Canyon. And Grand Canyon is there because millions and millions of drops of water passed through there. And I said, I feel like I'm one of the drops of water. And I would encourage the Irish people to add a lot more drops of water. Well, I don't feel it's the end, actually. It may be the end of this particular segment, but the U.S. is so heavily involved in all of this and this abuse of Irish neutrality. And then you have the government is wanting to join NATO and that would completely do away with Irish neutrality. No, we don't want to be involved in these wars. And if Ireland stands up to the United States, it sends a message of strength. You stood up to the bully, and every Irish citizen can walk with their heads held up high of what they did, that they stood up for peace, they stood up for neutrality, which has been a key component of Irish history for a long time. And I think it would set an example for the rest of the world. On the other hand, if Irish neutrality goes down the river, that sends a very bad example for the world. So I feel that what we did was important. It was a step that I feel we had to take to bring this issue as much as possible to light. And as U.S. military veterans, I felt we were morally and ethically mandated to do this. The fact is, the U.S. military is 
literally destroying any real concept of Irish neutrality by sending hundreds of thousands of troops with their weapons through Shannon. That is an insult to the Irish people. That's my message.